What it be y'all, once again it's Resident 47 and this video is going to be going up on the channel on December 9th, 2022. December 9th is a personal holiday of mine because it's the day my top 5 artists of all time, my favorite singer of all time was born and brought into the world. The legendary, iconic figure known to the world as Cat Bjelland, the guitarist and singer from Babes in Toyland. Guitarist and singer from Catastrophe Wife, the bassist in Crunt. Cat also had like a handful of short lived bands outside of those three as well. But um, I couldn't just do top 20 so Toyland songs because a lot of the songs she's done outside of the band are right there with the core Toyland material. Like a lot of Catastrophe Wife songs are around that same level. Uh, there's a Crunt song in here that I. Just die for. And no more introduction needed. Happy born day to the legendary Cat Beyond. Uh, hope she can make it through this day with no pain. I hope she enjoys the fuck out of her special day. And no more sad shit. Let's get down to the positivity. Top 20 songs of all time. And set it off with number 20. This song is from 2004. And it's from my favorite album by this band she, she was in. And it's going to be Sweetheart, Catastrophe Wife. From my favorite album of theirs, All Neil. I love the opening riff that this song starts with. That, that, I just could hear like the two notes fighting against each other. And it just creates that devil's chord sound that I fucking love. And the song's just classic Cat Bjorn. Fright screams in the chorus. She keeps her voice raspy in the verses as well. And I love the line on the song that it goes like, Nine lives have come to follow you. That's just still simple wordplay with her name being Cat. Dan Donovan, he goes in on the drums too. Sweetheart is a standout on All Neil. This song's a winner. Number 20. And next up, number 19, we're going to be going to the band everybody loves and knows her for. I won't have to say it. This song is 1990 material. And we're going to be going with Babes of Toyland, Boda Rap. This is from Spanking Machine, track 5 on the album. It's an underrated cut from Spanking Machine. One of my top 5 from the album. All the band just lets off and goes mad for two and a half minutes. Lori abuses the toms like she's best at. Cat's guitar fretwork sounds really manic too. Even Michelle goes in. Like her bass really cuts through. And I love that breakdown that comes in in between the verses. That bow, 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 down, down. That is a fucking headbang moment every time I play it. Cat's performance on this song. It plays perfectly into the title being Boda Rap because it's like a fast-paced rap flow. And we really weren't hearing stuff like that in 1990. And I love like the stutters. I love the stutters she adds into her voices like, Stick your squirrel world of hey, this is why I ride away. And it comes back around on the second verse. Like when she goes, uh, call the cat cat old black, this is why I wish that Jackie built his house on sand. That line will come back up again in another song later down the list. I fucking love Boda Rap. It should get a lot, lot more love. I, it brings me back to my high school years. I used to uh, drive to and from school, bumping spanking machine almost every day. And I could get to and from that place back to my house by the time this song comes up. And it's like, it's like three blocks away from my house. Love Butter Rap. It's fucking nostalgic for me. It's short. It's to the point. It packs in a lot within two and a half minutes. That's number 19, Butter Rap. Next up at number 18. This song's also from the Spanking Machine era, but it didn't make it to the album. And this is a song that I don't think a lot of people know about. And this is going to be from the Intermensual box set. Which is the, you know, the Devil Live Vile Anthology. This is on the Vile Disc. And this is going to be a song called Dirty. This had to be recorded around the Spanking Machine or maybe even the Two Mother era. And 
I wish they made like whatever record they're supposed to like land on because it's so fucking dope. It, and the it, the title is perfect. Like this song sounds dirty and dusty as fuck. In my senior high school days was when I started digging into like the Toy and Rarity is like all the B sides and outtakes they had. And this one was a standout for me. I played this like so many fucking times. I I remember vividly like walking through the halls playing songs like this. Uh, shit like Ariba with like their sub pop song, but uh, this one, Cat's poetry and personality on this song is really dope. Like, I'll show you crazy teeth. I'll slit this dizzy throat. <laughs> Grimy, just simply put. And it seems like I'm the only one out here that knows about this song. Like. If you ain't heard Dirty, check it the fuck out. It is so good. Like, her personality is just so dope on this song. The guitarists sound really good as well. So that's number 18, Dirty, from uh, the anthology. Next up at number 17, it's another leftover song from the Spanking Machine era. It didn't make the cut, but it landed on a compilation called Teriyaki Asthma Volume 4. You can also get this on uh, the vinyl disc as well. This song is going to be uh, Flesh Crawl. Toyland Surfbuck influence on this track is big, much like the Spanking Machine album itself. Cat's voice sounds so damn sharp here. This is probably my favorite era of her voice, but there's there's no doubt that she nailed her perfect timbre on Fontanelle. That's the voice everybody knows. I, like, I love when uh, she says, Hear your head, truth is there, walking around dead everywhere. I like how she says that in the song itself. This would have pe- fit perfectly on Spanking Machine. As far as the track listening, I can see this being followed up after Boda Rap. The song, I was just talking about that song. So, number 17, Flesh Crawl, from Teriyaki Asthma, Volume 4. Next to number 16, this is a song nobody knows about at all. Only like the top Toyland scholars know about this one. And I had no word of its existence for years. Until one day, the homie Nerd Brain showed me the entire set list of all their Peel Sessions. And this one is from their 95 Peel Sessions. And I thought this would be a cover song, but no. This is a 100% original song that they wrote themselves. This shit here is called Cauterize. This is straight out of the Nemesis Sisters era. It's... It should have been on the album itself. It's amazing. And it's in studio quality on YouTube. This, it's like the only Toilet song with all three members singing on it. Cat does the chorus. It's so fucking haunting. I don't know what she's saying on it. It sounds so d- dark though. Lori does the first and third verses. Maureen does the second verse. And she fucking kills it. She has such a goddamn good voice. She needs to get more love for that. Killer on the Road. Go listen to that song. Go listen to this song because don't people know shit about it. Which sucks because it's, it's top 20 material. Number 16, Cauterize. Nemesis is era. Salute to Nerd Brain for showing me their set list and putting me onto the song. Number 15 is going to go back to Catastrophe Wife from their first album, Amusia, from 2001. It's going to be Boomerang Doll. What's one of the most laid back songs Cat has done. It's a song for like, like just getting lit out in the field. It's got a mellow springtime feeling to it. It's something I could hear on alternative radio between 2001 and 2002. And Keith St. Louis, he kills his bass on this song. And like that, uh, that a lonely bit Cat does between the verses, it, it's... Chilling and when she goes off at the end of the song and just starts yelling, she breaks the sound barrier. And I just love the song, like she says, like, uh, all plastic and mattress burn the gal all made of straw. But to stand out on Amusia, it just hits differently from anything else she's done. And I think at Katasha Wife, I think Kat proved just how amazing of a singer she is. She's not just all screams all day. And that's another reason why people need to stop s- fucking snoozing on Katashi Wife. She can sing from the depths of her soul. Number f- just no, listen to Rosacea on that album. I'll tell you. So that's number 15, Boomerang Doll. 
Number 14 is gonna go back to Spankin' Machine, and I'm gonna go with the sign and track to the album Swamp Pussy. One of my all time favorite songs across all genres and all eras of music. Once you start up the album, that beat drops in instantly and catch screaming in your ears within seconds. The guitars are abrasive as a motherfucker. And this song tells you what the entire Spanking Machine album is going to sound like. And it's one of their songs that reach its summit when played live. Like, they go fucking unhinged when they play it. Cat Murray's the second verse when she does that. Struggle, struggle, you got to struggle. I've always loved how Cat rides the beat on that second verse. It just makes the shit really catchy. And another fun fact. Swamp Pussy was actually Cat's original idea for the band name. But Michelle shot it down, and so Lori came up with Babes in Toyland from that 1934 Disney movie. So, number 14, Swamp Pussy from Spankin' Machine. Number 13 is gonna go back to Cat Tax for Your Wife again. Back to the Amnesia album. It's a sign and track to that album in its own respect, Gone Away. It's a single for the album as well, and... This cat just knows how to set off albums for just, as soon as it starts, your ears are getting caved in. Just like Swamp Pussy. And towards the one minute mark, she pulls off one of the fucking nastiest screams she's ever fucking done. Like, she fucking holds that shit for like fucking 13 seconds or something. The first verse of like she says, And that's why I adore you, I abhor you either way. It's a simple twist of the letters within those two words is just fucking sick wordplay. And that fucking breakdown with those harmonic riffs coming in. And she does that picture, a uh, dead ringer of the singer. Ugh, fuck. That is so fucking sick. I fucking love that. That shit is so hard. Cat came in this track and fucking cut heads off. She destroys this shit. It's one of the best fucking songs I've ever heard in my life. Whew. 13, can't touch your wife, gone away, that's all I gotta say. Okay, number 12 is gonna be from 1991. It's gonna be my favorite track on the Two Mother EP. This song is called Ripe. This is noisy, destructive chaos for, what is it, 3 minutes, 35 seconds? Like the suspenseful build up to the song, and then Kat just drops in with her gnarly screams and it just starts letting off. The verses... She spills out these psychotic ramblings. I have no idea what she's talking about, but they just multiply the insanity rate of this song like a hundred thousand times more. That fucking bridge at 218 is fucking grimy. I get fucking violent urges when I hear that. How Cat switches her voice to like sound a lot more raspy. Shell kills the bass on this song too. And, uh, Beavis and Butthead, they also, uh, watch the video for this song, and Beavis' cat impression is always priceless. And the, that one story they told about, about them framing that old woman for giving kids drug candy, is so fucking crazy. That's number 12, right from, uh, the Two Mother EP. Alright, number 11, going back to Spanky Machine again. This almost made the top 10. Dust Cake Boy. The first single, which I have, thankfully, this is one of the most chaotic songs I've ever heard as well. The back and forth dynamics with the riffs and the verses are fucking crazy. The surf rock influence again and this song is very strong. The shredding of the chorus. I love that. Cat just goes completely ballistic with her fry screams. And the delivery she uses is just psychotic. Sending psychic messages you can't even hear from my dumb mouth to your deaf ear. One of my favorite lines anyone's ever said right there. This just goes hard, the song goes in. Cat style poetry is just very unique. And on this song, it's lyrically one of the best songs he's ever written. It's quoted all the time. It's a set of signature, an eternal classic, Dust Cake Boy, 1990 for Spake and Machine. Y'all already know. Now we're in the top 10. Number 10. I detest this album with a passion, but thankfully, it has a saving grace in it. Cat got her own spot on the mic. And she takes that song to fucking eviscerate shit. And the song is unglued from the Crunt album. Now, the main reason why I don't like the Crunt album is because Stuart Gray, I can't deal with his voice. 
But he kills the wrist in this song. I have to give credit where it's due. The guitars sound gnarly. And Kat's charisma is just at a million in this song. Like, just how she's... Just the verses with that. I'm coming to meet ya. Coming to beat ya. And how the riff... It goes with the riff. How it goes with it. It just always gets me up. The breakdown between the verses. Sounds something more to hear. Sounds more like something to hear on a Toyland song. Unglued. From the current album. It's one of my favorite songs of all time across the board. Oh, it's a banger. I wish I had a video. And it's another wormhole back to my senior high school days. You know, it reminds me of my video production class and all that shit happened at the time. So that's number 10, Crunt Unglued. 1994 came out. Next at number 9. This is my favorite Cat Beyond song outside of Toyland. It's from Amusia again. It's the song Get Go. And this is also my introduction to Cat Tash for Your Wife. Because I thought it was a Toyland song at first because it's on the best of the Toyland album. But Cat's on her Bruce Violet shit in this song. She just lets off. It's one of their most punk influenced songs. Mainly in the verses. Like that riff is punk as fuck. Never thought I had to take it. Never thought I had to fake it. Never felt the need to try all the shit you pulled. And uh, I love also when she says this, I never kissed the ass of cash. Meaning I never sold out to get paid. I don't know if she's going at a real person or not in this song. But with the confidence in her voice, I wouldn't rule that out. Since this is the most, no one can fuck with me she sounded in her career. And I love it. The guitars are up in your face. Glenn Masters' drums are ruthless as too. Again, like Gonawick and Boomerang Doll. I can hear this on alternative radio in 2002. So, n number nine. Can't attach for your wife, get go. This is a Toyland level song. Number eight. She screams, sweet hell. My second fair track with Spanky Machine. I think Lashes is one of their most underrated songs to me. The lyrics for this track are also a real poem that Kent wrote called Best Sunday Dress. You now everybody knows that pick. Uh, the frame dress with the head written poem and all that. Louis drumming on this song is so brutal. It hits really hard. Um, Cat kills this shit to pieces. I gotta love that cracks in the motor chant she does. It's unforgettable. And I love how dusty the chorus sounds when she does that. Every time she blinks, makes me sick into Ruby, Ruby, Ruby Jewel Ashes. Again, like I've mentioned before, Cat singing from the depths of her soul on this song. It's another wormhole back to the summer of 2018 when Toyland took over my entire fucking life. Lashes is a summer fall evening soundtrack song for me. Just like the 5 five thirty p.m. sunset music. Number 8, Dave's and Toyland Lashes from Spanking Machine. Michelle kills it again on the bass too in this song. Next up at lucky number 7. This is the very final song Babes in Toilet ever recorded back in 1998. This debuted on the Songs of the Witchblade soundtrack. Then it reappeared on the, the Best of Toyland album, which is where I first heard it. And this, this song is called Matter Dolorosa. For me, this is Caviant's sharpest songwriting in her entire career. It's the most cryptic shit she's written. Like, um, it's one of my favorite lines anyone's ever written. My mind's in open season, synapses falling out of line. Don't know what that means, but it sounds so fucking cool. Another line on this song that was really dope to me was, uh, My Matter Dolorosa Convex the Mirror in Front of Me. The music itself on this song, it sounds like a throwback to Fontanelle. Very mysterious and dark feeling to this one. But it also sounds like what could have been the next evolution of this band. I seriously really wish, really wish they put out a fourth album in the late 90s, like around 97 or 98. I can only imagine what the next step in their evolution would have sounded like. So, number seven, Mata Dolorosa. I had to represent the last song they ever recorded on the songs of the Witchblade. Okay, now number six. I'm fucking done with this. I'm done with people sleeping on this track. It's my favorite track on Spanking Machine. It's far and away Toyland's most slept on song. And I think it's one of their best. Number six is going to be You're Right. Michelle Leon, 
also underrated as fuck, and I think this is the song where she gets to show what she's made of. I love the bass line she brings to this. That boom, bam, boom, 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 boom. Everybody's in their zone on this song. Lori brings it in with her tribal drum style, the pre-chorus. And then the chorus itself has an amazing riff, and it always gets stuck in my head. Cat singing on this song is also really dope. Her voice sounds amazing. A lot more laid back compared to the rest of the album. And I love hearing her drop the Boda Rap call back in the second verse. Where she says, Suffering on the house Jack built on a foundation of mudslides. Going back to when she said, uh, Jack built his house on sand and mudslides. And I love the riff that goes in with the verse and how her voice matches it. It just, it just gives me a good feeling listening to this song. It brings me back to my high school days. Like I said about this whole album, you're right as hard as a motherfucker. I feel like I'm the only one in, the, in this world that loves the song as much as I do. I want people to start waking up and listening to this song more. Again, we get some more love. Give it some more praise. It deserves to be in the Bruce Violet, Dust Cake Boy, Sweet 69, etc. conversations. It's a class Toyland music. So that's number six, You're Right, from Spanking Machine, track nine of the album. Listen to it. Refresh your brain on it. It is a masterpiece. All right, we cracked the top five now. Number five is going to be going from a song that it seems like only I love up to a song that I know everybody loves. Now we're getting into the album everybody loves from them. This is in my top six or five albums of all time, Fontanelle. And the song I'm going with is Won't Tell. <sighs> this is so grimy. It's funny because this is like the only radio single friendly song on the whole album. Is the quiet, loud grunge formula. And when the chorus drops in, it's hard as fuck. Cat's guitars and vocals are fucking evil sounding. The figure out... Your problem with me. Y'all know it. I love how she says it, and that's just like one of her classic cryptic messages. I don't fucking know what that means. And this song does have a video too, which was surprising to me. It's my favorite Babes in Toyland video. It's just a fever dream come to life, pretty much. I don't know who directed it, but much loose to them. They fucking murdered it. So that's number five. Won't tell, Fontanelle. Not much to say about it. It speaks, it speaks for itself. Next up at number four. To me, this is the darkest song Cat Bjelland has ever made. And it's towards the back of the Fontanelle album. Mother. Self-explanatory title. Cat Bjelland's time to get revenge on her abusive stepmother. The suspense in the intro of the song is suffocating and the intensity of the song is just as brutal. It's it makes me fucking wanna pull right as a fucking soy boy right out of his fucking ways. I run for you and it shows that's what you like me for, sister. Crawl the now on the floor, do you like it? That's fucking evil, dude. Just beating our mom's ass so she's weak as a dog. I wish this had a video too. It would have been a fucking horror movie, dude. And that... That scream she pulls off are like, what is it? 217? <sighs> that shit is fucking crazy. And you, like, you can hear the trauma getting to her when she does that. And... Who the fuck can speak tongues? Who the fuck else do you know can speak tongues? To anyone that know, Anyone who does know what she's saying... At the end of that shit, let me know what it is. Because I would love to know. But, number four. Mother from Fontanelle. What a fucking brutal song. Alright, we're coming towards a singularity now. Number three. This song had to be on the list because it's the song that won me over with Babes in Toilet and What's It For All. And somehow this is the only song on the list from this album. But, it's from... Their 1995 album, Nemesis Sisters, Sweet 69. Once I saw them jamming this on 120 minutes, 
seeing what the band looked like for the first time, developing a crush on Cat Beyond rapidly fast. I was all the fuck in with this band. They rip shit apart on this song. And it's probably my favorite vocal performance Cat Beyond's ever given. It's between that or Fork Down Throw on Spanking Machine. She hits every note perfectly, and she can switch up her voice like it's nothing. Like, those notes she hits in the chorus, which she goes like really high. Man, so good. And the guitarist in this song, just dirty as fuck sounding. I have no idea what kind of a distortion pillow can make a sound like that. But, Lori also murders it on the drums too. Her drums on Nemesis just sound really crispy. And Maureen brought on the bass too. Everyone's just at their A-plus game. Sweet 69's just one of those songs that speak for itself again. Definitive song from 1995 to me. It's iconic. Their biggest hit too, I think. So, number three. Sweet 69 from Nemesis Sisters. The song makes me think of the video as well. And like the press kit they did with the back behind the scenes of the video. 60's out as fuck. So, number two now. What could number two be? Handsome and Gretel. Either version works, the 7 inch or the Fondel version. I prefer the 7 inch because it just hits a little harder. But that riff, again, it's made for pulverizing somebody. This is Toyland's number one best mosh pit song. Cat's Poetry gets a lot more raunch here. This will get some SJW prudes in their feelings. You know, my name is Gretel, yeah. Got a crush that talks. It talks to other cocks. It's been 12 city blocks, you fucking bitch. Cat just gets revolting on this song, and I'm all down with it. It's, again, another song. It just speaks for itself. It's one of their more straightforward tracks. It's under two minutes. And I just fucking love that riff that. Oh, I fucking. Yeah, that's that shit right there. I vacuumed out my. I love this song. It's. Uh, number two, Handsome and Gretel. One of the grimiest songs I've ever heard in my life, you know. She is a stupid crotch that's been 12 city blocks. Now, before the ultimate number one, I gotta drop some honorable mentions on y'all. Uh, first off, this could be uh, a song called They All Must Be Slaughtered for, uh, with the Melvins. On their hockey album. One of my favorite duets of all time. Uh, Ariba, the sub pop song. Uh, a two part tracker here, I'll put. Uh, short song slash jungle train. Um, Lane to Rest on the O'Neill album. Fucking viscerating yourself off of the death of Lane Staley. But, but, there's only one song that I think is worthy of being number one. It's the song everybody thinks of when they think of this band. It was my introduction to this band back in 2009. Can y'all guess what it is? Bruce Violet. I mean, it's a cliche, but I mean, you can't fucking knock it. This is also in my top five songs of all time across all genres and all eras of music. It's a sign-in track to Fontenelle. As soon as it starts, it's merciless brutality over your system immediately. Louis' kicks on this song will drill through your skull and Kat's voice will pour the brains out. You know, when she does the you got the thing that follows me around, it sends chills through my whole nervous system every time, just haunting as fuck. You know, the video is legendary too. Cat Beyond Apocalypse taking over New York. You got all the clones looking over the Brooklyn Bridge. Cat strangling Cindy Sherman over the stairs. The rocking shit at CBGB's. You'll know what time it is. I think this song should have the same recognition as like Smells Like Teen Spirit, Man of the Box, Spoon Man, Blind, Sober, etc. as like the 90s most defining rock songs. Whether or not Cat was or wasn't pulling Courtney Love's Shark Biter card or like I said... Bruce Violet's on my top five songs of all time across the board. And those, those are my top 20 favorite Cat Beyond songs. Very, very happy special born day to my favorite singer of all time. A top five or even top three artist of all time to me. And 
Let me get in, say it again for you slow fucks. Cat Bjelland. That's how you pronounce it. It's pronounced with a Y, not a J. But, um, these are totally, they're my third favorite band of all time. They trailblazed a lot of shit. Everything from everybody wanting to rock the thrift shop dresses, kicking their legs as high as they can, playing, even down to the, her hand rank style. People bite every single angle of Cat's style. She's a trendsetter, but even in the grand scheme in the of the masses, Babes of Toilet are still hatefully fucking slept on. I think they deserve, like, a, a mainstream recognition in some sort. So, there it is. Right the top 20 Cat Bjelland songs. If y'all like this, uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, share this, and all that. And uh, I'll see y'all on the next upload. So, peace.